you know, the book of Romans, they call it the other gospel because it is a book that will provoke you to repent. It's a book that makes you look at and recognize and really look at your life and really see where you went, where you fell short. It'll make you look at your error and look at ways that you can do things better. If you're looking, say, you know what? I know I'm not measuring up. I know I'm not there, but also the balance that make you understand what grace is. That God, I'm striving, even though I'm not there, grace is filling in the gap. And I reminded you that grace ain't so you can sin. Grace is when you're striving and you're falling short. And grace has been so um, inappropriately used by the church. It's either been either cast aside by the Pentecost or the Holiness Church because they're so strict that you got, you know, you can't dare sin or anything or you going straight to hell. Or we have the Baptist who uses to say you can do whatever you want to do. Have it your own way. It's a Burger King world until there's been no balance of grace. So you find the church either abusing or pushing it aside. And so tonight we want to provoke you to come and embrace grace. Amen. Amen. And understand that grace is there for those who need. That's it. My grace is sufficient. <laughs> it is there. It's enough when you don't have enough. It is there when you can't add up and you can't make up and you can't, you know, you can't, you know, reach your goal. It is sufficient. So when we find here this, this book is about the grace of God, but it's also about the power of God. And it's also about the understanding of the, the of the role of the Holy Spirit within this thing we call salvation. Yeah. See, that's why some believe without the Holy Spirit, you're not saved. You know, because without the conviction, and this is what I'm trying to get people to understand. When we say that when people confess Christ and they don't have the Holy Ghost, if you don't have the conviction of the Holy Spirit, it ain't, you know, whether you speak it in tongues, because you can speak in tongues and still have a devil. It's about do you have the conviction that when God begins to deal with you, that you repent, that you turn your back on what you were doing that displeased him. Yeah. And see what the body has been, we're so busy trying to get tongue that we don't left our conviction. So you got people speaking in tongue, but ain't got no conviction. Oh, Lord, help us tonight. Amen. So when we come into this, the, the book of Mormons, and by the time we hit chapter 15, and he's he began to, to deal with some things and he's talking about um he's been called to the gentiles and he's he's what he do he's legitimizing why the gentiles and gentiles are those who were not born jews and you know they were never converted you know they were they were they were not converted to judaism and you know it's talking about how do we get in how do this unrighteous uncivilized unlearned people getting grafted in to a very structured God. You know, how do these people who have no boundaries, they have no form, they have no really shape about what they believe, how do they get constructed and placed and, and grafted into this gospel that they become a part of this vine, this, this vine of life? And so what he does, he begins to give validation to the understanding of us having a knowledge of what the gospel really means. And what he does he, to give the basis of the gospel, you have to reach all the way back to the Old Testament and speak it and bring people up to date to understand. Because if you don't, we keep trying to separate the Old and the New Testament. It's like dividing the body and saying, you know what, the top part of your body is good and the lower part of your body you don't need. But you need the whole body to function. Without a solid foundation of the Old Testament, you won't appreciate the grace that's in the New Testament. Amen. So when we go and try to preach the New Testament without giving him by the foundation of the old, that's when we have sloppy leadership and we have sloppy lifestyles and we have a, a sloppy understanding. So you have people living raggedy lives because the foundation of understanding the value of grace and forgiveness, when you see the sin, what people did in the Old Testament that they died for. Yeah. That you did way more than and you get to still live. Thank you, Lord. Then you understand what grace really is. And so what he does, he he be talking, he begin to deal with Isaiah because everybody understand when they go back because he prophesied so many relevant things and he was so recognized, you know, as a prophet when he spoke this. Not so much that the Gentiles had an understanding, but the the Jews who were there, they had an understanding because they respected Isaiah. You know what I'm saying? So when they begin to speak on the patriarchs of the Old Testament, is what made modern Jews embrace it. 
They said, because if you could speak the words of Isaiah and you could give us a, a foundation that Isaiah spoke this and give us, you know, we can trace it back to his words and we can trace it back to what he spoke, we can believe it for today. So what happened is that he's now went in this and he said, and again, Isaiah said, watch what he said in verse 12. There should be a root of Jesse, and he shall be he shall rise up to reign over the Gentiles, and him shall the Gentile trust. So he was giving validation that Isaiah prophesied that there was a Messiah coming, and that he was going to be from the root. Look at me, he said that he was going to be from the root of Jesse. And who was Jesse? Jesse was David's father. So he said, now this thing goes all the way back. Isaiah said, now you know he was an old line prophet. And he said he, he promised you that and that he shall rise up and he was going to rule over the Gentiles. So he said that there was going to be somebody who was going to be legitimately from the Jews, but he was going to be utilized over. He was going to rule over the Gentiles who didn't even believe, who were not converted to Judaism. And so he said this ain't strange so you can believe this. And so he began to get, he said, in, in him shall the Gentiles, they shall trust in him. So it's already prophesied that we will trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. So it's not strange that we trust him and they don't. Wow. Because it was stated that the Gentiles would trust in him. Wow, Jesus. Not so much the Jews, but we would. Amen. Amen. And now we, we pick it up in verse 13. He says, now the God of our hope fill you all joy and peace and believe it. Now, if this time you know you don't really believe. The reason why we know you don't believe, even they were believing and you don't believe, because you're not filled with our joy. Jesus. If you really believe what God said, you would have a peace about everything but your finances and your home. You would have a peace, but the, the sign that you don't really believe that is because you ain't got a peace about it. Those things you got a peace about, you ain't no worrying about them things. Guess what? Not only you're not worried about it, you're not even thinking about it. Why is it something that you believe the devil can't beat you up with? Why he ain't torment your mind with something you believe? Because he can't. Because you easily dismiss him. The reason why he has a, a gateway, a, a space, because a small space in your mind, that 1%, don't know if God really going to do it. That, that little small percentage, he gets in there and he wiggles his way around. In a little, and that's why you can't get it and lose your mind. They keep looping your mind, you know, every seven days. You know, you don't got better. <laughs> it don't come every day. <laughs> it's just cycle now in a couple of days. <laughs> but those things you fully persuade, he don't even bother them no more. Yeah. If the devil knew you really believe what you said, he wouldn't even bother bothering you with that anymore. Oh, the only reason that he's bothering you with it because he knows it still bothers you. But this is when you pray and say, God, trouble my trouble. That it don't trouble me no more. So he began to say, he feel you because you believe. So believing has a benefit. It gives you joy and peace. Good God Almighty. This is why you should love faith. Because faith gives you, it gives you joy and peace. The thing that you long for. You look for it. You try everything else to get when God said you'll give him one dose of faith. Yeah. If you would just believe, you would have joy and you would have peace. Hallelujah. Lord, we would sleep so much better. <laughs> <laughs> that you may abound in hope. And then guess what you have? <laughs> when you believe you got hope, you say, I, I know it's going to be all right. Yeah. 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 All right. I, oh, I don't know how, but God, He is going to work it all out. He is. Somehow or another, it's going to work itself out. Oh, God. 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 Somehow or another, God's going to fix whatever's broken. You know what I'm saying? I can't tell you how. I just know somewhere in the mix, God's going to work it out. Hallelujah. So when you really believe, you're not struggling with your faith. When you really believe, you're not struggling with hope. When you really believe, you're not depressed. You're depressed because you don't believe. The reason why you're heavy and you're sad and you look confused in your eyes and you know what I'm saying? It's because, yeah, when you're confused, it'll be all up in your life. Ooh, confused? Yeah. I see it. <laughs> when
when you do, you you got hope. Like wow, life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's gonna be all right. You 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 have hope about your life and about things that the things that yeah. Oh, you get you heard? No, I ain't heard nothing yet. But I got hope. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. No, 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 it ain't changed since yesterday, nope. but my hope sprouted. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, yeah. Nothing, nothing, nothing more. I heard a word that encouraged me to trust in the hope. Yeah. See, that's all that happens. Your situation may be the same, but your mindset has changed. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So he began to say, when you believe, this is the benefit of the belief that you are bound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. And this is when the Holy Ghost steer you. Away from doubt and fear. Come on, I mean, you about to go in a head-on collision yes, wow. That's with fear. That's real. You about to collide with hopelessness. Jesus. You about to slam right into depression. Yeah. And hope said, that ah, we gonna dodge it. Hey, yeah. you get that and just know you about. To, and all of a sudden, there's a turn. You was on your way to being depressed. Yeah. But there was a turn. Good God Almighty, it. Who was on your way to being hit. But there was a sudden turn. The Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Ghost directed you and shifted you. Thank you, Lord. Before you could crash. Lord, I think maybe it's just for me tonight, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It's through the power. And that's why I keep going back. God dealt with two things. I was telling the, the uh, pastor last night. The Lord was dealing me about the power of the blood. Because we don't say no more. We don't say the blood of Jesus no more. My kids, honey, they, 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 that was the second thing. Everything, the blood of Jesus. Everything, everything was the blood. Not the blood, God. You know, you better say the blood. And, and they understood the power of the blood. I said, everything happened in the blood. And I even said, me, I had to check myself. And say, Lord, when the last time I said the blood? I said, God, you know, when the last time I said the blood of Jesus come? Block it. You, I realized that even I had lost the essence of the blood. You, you don't even know the enemy is drawing you away because he understands what the power is. Because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. People wonder why they came back because they're trying to wash down the water and never been cleansed by the blood. It's like trying to put water where there's been no soap. It's the power of the blood, and we can. The blood is that so it's got to clean you up so that when you put that water over it, it really washing that stuff away. Amen. But to get it from being ingrained in you, it takes the blood. So I said, Lord, I, I didn't even recognize until God was dealing with me all day yesterday how I even had gotten away from the blood. And you don't even know how the enemy can begin to pull the blood out of your vocabulary. Wow. And guess what he'll pull next? Your praise. Wow. It, it's subtle. It, it's so subtle, you don't even recognize. I said, Lord, he just checked me yesterday. He said, when the last time you had a good thing. Honey, I had to go on YouTube and put some music oh, on my phone and shout. That That's good. Because guess what? We, you know, y'all don't like shouting at GLM. So I said, God, it's been a minute since I had me a good shout. And I refuse to wait. I get the shot of the shot. The devil is a lie. Baby, I'm going to give me a shot. Baby, I'm going to put the music on every other day, baby. Shout. I said, devil, can I understand the power of my praise? Because when I pray, I worry less. Hallelujah. All right. Honey, baby, stuff would be crazy, but we were both in a praise, baby. I know it's going to be all right. I know it's going to be good. It's a power in a praise. But you don't even know any of that suddenly. Taking the dance out your hands. He suddenly took it the wave and I show him. He suddenly took the God, I know you're gonna do it. And I do it. Right out of your breath. You yeah. should just hey God, you your whole holler don't went down. You didn't even recognize that he suddenly took you. When the last time you just laid there and said, God, I worship you. Like Lord, yeah. He don't pull you straight off the floor. That's real. That's real. You didn't even know He don't pull you off the floor. That's real. When the last time you wept in the in, in, in the shower, not because nothing wrong, but you thought about it. Right. Come on. 
and what he had done brought you from and what he brought you through that you in the shower you couldn't tell the difference between your tears and the water and you ain't recognized that it has robbed you of the thing that kept you amen you gotta get back you gotta get back he said i myself also am persuaded of you i i just believe i'm persuaded you know that you can't change me that god ain't gonna about to make some sudden change. Come on, come on, yeah. Thank you, Lord. I am persuaded. Yes. I am mm -hmm. that in the box, he's gonna make some sudden change. Yes. Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 And the That's reason why good. he's gonna do that because that you also are full of goodness. All that mess he done heard about you. Tell me, it's time for some goodness to come up out of you now. <laughs> you don't have everything yet to come up out of you. People expect everything to come out of you but goodness. Oh, Lord. Oh, God. Come on. See, this is where people are going to be shocked because their expectation is for foolishness and something crazy and something logical. Because they know it's some goodness. Hallelujah. It's going to come right up out of you. You, you ain't looking for it, but that's what you're going to get. Some goodness. What is the other thing? Because they, it can't be good without knowledge, information. You got to be filled with knowledgeable. You are not, the reason why you're not full. Reason why you got it because you have not applied the word to your life that you really see. What happened? Application bring back results. So then you don't just believe something that you know it. See, there's some things you believe but you don't know yet. Oh my God. My God. But what happened when you apply the word, you go from uh just believing it to knowing it. Yeah. And the reason why you when there's some things the devil don't, don't fight you on no more, because you don't just believe it, you know it, and so he can't move you. Because true. knowing puts you in a place of permanency. That's true. Oh, Once you know it, just like what well, you can't do that with that. Oh and then you can change it so I know. Only thing the devil can fight you with is what you don't know. That's true. What he's fighting you with is because you're not you're not persuaded that you know that he put all your trust in him. That he'll keep you. You you say that you believe that, but it's like you don't know it because you ain't given the opportunity to do it. Every time he tries to do it, he takes some back. You hold something back, tell him, but quit holding out on God. Oh, yeah. And then complain about what you kept in your oh, hand. Yeah. We hold out and keep Lord, something back. And then we complain that God has not dealt with it. He can't deal with what you won't release. Yes, Lord. That's good. So what he's doing, he's saying, listen, I need you to know this. And how do you know this? You got to apply my word. Lord, help me. Oh. Yes, Jesus. Well, how you know this thing? You won't lead it. It may lead you in the wrong way because the Lord is my shepherd. My God. Hallelujah. I shall Hallelujah, not Jesus. want. If I, every time I let him lead me, he exceeds my expectations. Because that's what he said I'll do. I'll do exceedingly above it. Above all you have asked or think. You didn't even ask him. But you thought about something you want it done. Oh, my God. You're but according to the power that works, the only thing that is power is the word, not your yeah, tongue. Yeah, the word. Yeah, yeah. See, it's that knowing in you. Wow. Like I know that. Wow. That knowing in you is the power that you can't be moved. Wow. It's what you know. Like I know him. I know him to be faithful. Like, you can't convince me. You can say whatever you want to say. I know he's a healer. I apply that word. And so no matter what you say about healer, I don't care what you say. I, what I know. I know he healed me, and you can't take that from me. Right? Amen. What the enemy can't rob you of is experience. Yes. Yes. Amen. That's good. When you have had an experience with God, yes. you can't, you can't, like, he did that for me. That. You can't convince me that God won't feed my kids. He did that for me. Right. You can't tell me God won't open the door for you to buy a house because he did that for me. You can't tell me that God won't supply God because he did that for me. You can't tell me God won't make way for tuition because he did that for me. Yeah, you can't convince me because he did that. And so I had that experience. So you can't. This is what the devil he said. He said this is what he told me. I was, I was talking to him about tuition this is last month. And I said, well, God, you know, it came to my mind. I said, oh, I got to take care of this. Yeah, so how you going to do it? And the devil said, that was last month. Uh, 
That's the true dad. But the same God who met me last month. He's gonna be through this month too. See, sometimes you got to learn to talk about it. He said, Oh yeah, that was then. I said, Yeah, and this is now. See what you're not gonna do, you're gonna not gonna make me shake over something I know I already experienced. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I don't care if I ain't have a dime of it. That's been the case. <laughs> he made a way. He did it. So you're not gonna make me think I got a dollar of it, and he ain't gonna do it. Isn't it something that you God can give you more than what you had the last time? And you will fight harder than you were you had now. But you know what? It's more dangerous to have a little of it than to have none of it. Because a little of it will make you go more in your mind with logical reasons how to get the remainder of it than to have to believe God for all of us. If you ain't got nothing, you say you ain't got nothing to lose. And you, I don't know why you think you would have something to lose if you just got a little bit of it. And all he got less than you gonna have to believe in for. But you don't look at it like you're like, oh, oh God, I don't, I don't know, I gotta wait. Let me see. And you have, I seen people who have money and struggle with believing God for the rest of it. And people who ain't got none be like, it's done. You know what I mean? It's done. You like, well, uh, closer to the goal than me, and you more shaky. Oh, it's it's true. True. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. I'm not gonna struggle if God gonna do it. I know He is. Amen. Oh, yeah. He said He, he, he the field with, with all knowledge. So you, this is why I keep telling you the importance of having a word and having five without prayer. I ain't got no word. I ain't got no scripture. How do you survive? Because if you ain't got a word, then you ain't filled with the word. If you don't have a word, trust me, you're not filled with the word. I and mean, I am, it's just not that scripture. No, you're not. <laughs> you're not filled with it. And that's dangerous. Because how are you going to activate faith with nothing to activate it through? My God. Like you, you got this situation, and faith is the only vehicle that can come through that and make it right, but you don't have any. Because you ain't got no word. You ain't listening to no word. You ain't thinking about no word. Because guess what? When you worry, the last thing you think about is the word. Jesus. That's oh, true. Jesus. That's the word. Amen. Or you thinking about how the word ain't working for you. Oh, Lord. Nobody wants to tell that truth. That's the truth. <laughs> about how, Lord, I'm trying to believe you and stuff still ain't right. God, <laughs> <laughs> I'm speaking the word. I'm doing everything oh, I know Lord, and stuff Jesus. still crazy. Come on now. All right. God, I've been still standing trying to hold up the flag. <laughs> 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 but I tell them you will not make me speak against what I'm believing. Oh, you gotta sit down and be like, oh, like, uh uh, no, no, devil. What you're not gonna do, you're not gonna take me and make me use my prophetic tongue and my prophetic voice to speak against what I'm prophesying for God to do and have me speaking against myself and being confused. That's how you end up with nothing. The Bible says, a dump, live as she I'm not. I'm telling you, a double minded. You going from one stable of another, he said, don't get nothing. Believe you. I'm going to pull you back. Right when God about to do it, you go and let the devil go and split your mind. He splits and say, well, what if? Well, I don't know. He don't supposed to know. Because he's not the one who believes. You are. Amen. If you keep looking and say, God, you ain't did nothing for my family, you did nothing for my it's because you're double minded and he ain't gonna give you nothing. That's it. Yeah. Lord, Lord. All right. Right. And then you mad at him because you you stay confused. Right. Lord have mercy. That's good. Where you at, God? <laughs> I'm here. Where your faith is. And I keep saying, so when I see all that, I say, okay, that means that I, I've been double minded. See, you won't even confess that you double mind. You won't even confess that you don't believe because you too busy trying to fake it till you make it. Come on now. And say, let me, don't fake it till you make it. How about confess where you at? Come yeah, on now. That's what God. God wants you to fake it till you make it because ain't nothing fake about God. He wants you to confess where you at. Amen. That's good. So you won't, when you confess where you at, you ain't got to fake nothing. Amen. But after you hear it, then what do you do? After you hear what to do, after you hear the word, you sit like, you come up and you say, what you mean? I need God to move my life here. 
14 dollars and i got two so okay, let's pray father in the name of jesus i just thank you right now for opening the door god i know you're gonna do it god because you're faithful to your word and god you said oh god we come both to the throne of grace and the competition on you we go through the whole thing you like that you're not crying because you believe it you're crying because you having to deal with something that you've been trying to suppress oh my god mm -hmm. and now you're confronting it you're getting emotional behind it Oh, you're not emotional behind the word. You're not emotional behind the prayer. Yeah. You're not moved that God's going to do it. You're crying because now you had to confront that which you were hiding. No, yeah. And you're like, and you, uh, uh, and the day the sun, they think like, oh yeah, let's go be like God gonna do it. <laughs> and they're not weeping over that God gonna do it. That's the one. They're weeping because that thing that they didn't want to deal with makes them emotional know that they still ain't it ain't resolved. It ain't <laughs> My God, have mercy. And see, I was like, you have to watch tears because they can be dangerous as well as deception. Yes, yes, yes. 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 You, you got to look at yourself and like, God, why am I crying? You have see, sometimes you got to go find out what's the essence of my tears, what's the root of it. And the reason why you know because 15 minutes later, <laughs> if somebody asked them, mm -hmm. they ain't got no new response. Come on, Jesus, Lord. Oh, my. I was like, what's up? You some praying. If you're going to, after we pray, you won't say the same thing you said before I release my faith. My God. That's weird. But people want to be emotional. Confess and say, I like being emotional. I like That's to right. be emotional. Because being emotional, it draws, it's some things you get to do when you're emotional that you don't get to do when you're sober. Right? That's so true. When you're emotional, you can get away with stuff. People look over you. No. And they'll look past what you do. Not do. When you're sober. Yeah. When you're sober, they say, uh uh, you, you're cognitive. Lord, you cognitive. But you're cognitive even while you're crying. You're cognitive. Yeah, right. Tears don't make you delusional. <laughs> they don't make you unknowledgeable or nothing. You know why you're crying. You know. I don't know why I'm crying. People came to me, I'd be like, yeah, you know why you're crying. <laughs> just like, Mama, no, it's not that. Stop. It's not that. What I had to confess to God, I said, God. <laughs> I I had to confess to God. I said, God, sometimes when certain people I don't like them. <laughs> and you know, the enemy trying to tell me to keep not like them, and I'm provoked to pray for them. Mm -hmm. And and you people, you let me tell you something. When you find yourself not liking people, it's because they hurt you. Yeah. And they've injured you. And either they have not accepted the responsibility of what they did to you, or you're not brave enough to tell them. That's so yes. true, man of God. We are affected because we're not brave enough to tell people because we don't want to think that they matter that much to us. Come on, Pastor, that's that's good. Good. <laughs> we don't want them to know that 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 you have that kind of effect on me. Amen. That's the truth, Lord. I mean, God has been telling me, He said, You 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 hurt, or you don't want to let them know they have that kind of effect on you. But the root of both of them is still pride. And when you up, when you see when you take layers of pride, you'll find about a whole lot. So <laughs> the more I'm like Jesus, God. He said, "Yeah, that's why you don't want to pray." Yes. See, because you know that if you pray, you know it'll provoke me to move, and a part of you don't want me to move for them. Jesus. A part of them want them to feel the same agony you felt for whatever you think they did to you or what they really did do to you. And if you pray, it's going to bring them relief before you get it. See, you don't mind them the relief coming after you're okay. But when God provokes you to pray, it's when you're not. That's the truth. Thank you for this word. And so we be challenged to really go in for people. And we can do it one time, but it takes everything in us to go and do it again. Yeah, <laughs> Lord. Thank you, God. God, I'm going to feel some kind of way. They're going all right, and I'm still looking crazy, and I'm stuck. Yeah. Because you refuse to let go of your pride and release yourself of your past. Yeah. And see, you don't want to be stuck in yesterday, and they don't move on to tomorrow out of your prayer. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I had to deal with that. 
I said, there's some people I really don't want to pray for, but I'm called. I'm, let me tell you what God told me. He cracked my face, and I was a little mad. I was in Atlanta. I was in my room just chilling, having a good time, you know, not thinking about nothing or whatever. The Lord told me to cry. I was like, mom. <laughs> now, I don't understand why I got to pray for a devil. <laughs> that first of all, ain't even, you know, I ain't responsible for them. They ain't the sheep of my dirt pasture. <laughs> And I, I'm just telling God, and the Lord said, I never told you to stop praying. Oh, Lord. And then I was like, well, Lord, you know, I'll do what you say, but God, they ain't lost. <laughs> <laughs> he said, they men can't come back because they injured. Oh, Lord. Oh, Jesus. See, we keep saying people ain't lost, but how you know they injured? Help us, Lord. And an injury will stop your mobility. That's the truth. That's true. oh, and so what he was telling the essence of the story is that you can't stop praying because you feel disconnected. Amen. Jesus. You can't stop praying for them until I told you the assignment was complete or canceled. My goodness. Oh, my. Oh, I'm just like, Lord, you mean to tell me I still got to pray for that devil? You know what? Because real prayer intercession is really for people who were may never acknowledge or never know that you prayed the prayer. It's for those things you would never get the credit for. Yes, Lord. But God would get the glory in you. He said that strips you of want to be seen, want to be known, oh, want people to know what you can do when I hide it even from you. I'm just saying. He said also to admonish one another. And that's the thing, like, uh, how do I encourage you? How do I admonish you? How do I tell you? How do I speak life to you when I feel you're trying to stab me? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's real. That's real all day. You go to help some people and they're striking out at you, and you like, I, I'm just trying. And, and 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 what do you do for people who don't want your help? Mm-hmm. Well, how do you help somebody who don't want it? You have to still pray that God will give them a mind to receive what they need. So your assignment can be complete. Lord, mm-hmm. That's how you do what you want to be right. You say, God, I'm praying for them to have a mind to receive what they need because I want my release. Lord, help me. Oh, God. Because if not, you're going to be stuck to where they are and God ain't going to release you until they come out to the place he called them. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. Jesus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I bet you encourage somebody now. <laughs> Nevertheless. Wait. <laughs> I have made the more bold unto you in some sort. He said it's a bold statement now. This some of this stuff is really like what? Yeah. You gotta be kidding me. Word. But what God is doing, He's trying to put you in mind because of the grace that is given to me of God. He said, I remember what God did for me and how I still it got for you, and you still don't want to pass on what's been done for you. Wow, Lord, deliver me. You still don't want to have to tolerate or you don't still want to have to put up with it. You still don't have to deal with what's been dealt with you. Yeah. you like, God, now, nah, mm, mm-hmm. that's a lie. God say, is it? Mm-hmm. What about what it required to get you through? Mm-hmm. See, we forget the process of our deliverance, our breakthrough, that's our change, true. or our healing. And so it's like, it just needs to happen really quickly for anybody else because you ain't got time for all that. They need to hurry up and get it because I, I don't pray two weeks in a row. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, well, if I had a Bible like them, I ain't have no that. If I had, if I had a date, a date, I would have been on it. They got it. They still ain't no better. But if I was, no, you see, we got to really, what you would have been better if you had something that they got that you say you didn't have. Just Tell you, neighbor, it's grace. 
Grace. You forgot that was given to you. It was grace was given to you. You had the grace. When you kept falling short and you kept falling off and you oh, kept being rebellious and you kept being inconsistent. You, you know, you kept having an attitude and you kept you know being inconsistent and you kept, you know, all that, you know, all you can remember how you kept praying, but we can kept remember how many times somebody had to push you to pray. And I'm yeah. somebody I had to provoke you in the word. And I'm somebody I had to, you know, demand that you come on up. And you know, you just didn't come on up because you up, 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 up. And they told you one time, you was up high. You didn't know it. That's not true. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Verse 6 is that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. Listen, listen. I didn't want to be shocked. <laughs> Dealing with people who are like me. Come on, come on. I understand my peace. But I'm ministering the gospel of God that the offering up to the Gentile may be acceptable. Like, I'm doing this because somebody got to go and lift those up who can't lift themselves up. They don't know what God trying to do is trying to make them acceptable. Mm -hmm. Right now. See, what God been doing about I am going to sanctify. I'm going to clean up who I'm going to use. Come on, Thank you, Lord. He said, "Being sanctified by the Holy Ghost." That's why. Who the heck have you told God sanctified? Mm -hmm. You don't even want to be saved. They don't, they don't even say sanctified no more. Because they don't even say I'm about a holy church no more. Because we don't got away holiness and sanctification. No words. We don't even use that vocabulary anymore. Because nobody want to be clean and set apart. You don't want to be set apart. You don't want to be clean. The last thing you want to be is known as a holy roller. <laughs> we we don't want they don't want we we want to be the world. We we don't want no distinction in us. You want to look like the world, dress like the world, act like the world, rap like the world, sing like the world. I don't want to do everything. So there is that's how people they they can't apply. They say, what is holy? Right. We the only religion that nobody can identify us. Lord, you're right. Everybody can identify the Buddhist, they can identify the Muslim, they, but we don't want one. We want to be unidentifiable. You know, I ain't winning, so people got to know how you and people. But you know what? The Muslim ain't got no problem wrapping up their head or, or letting down their hem. And they don't care what nobody know about them. Not the Buddhist, it's just us. We share. Shame of who we are. I kept saying, why would Jesus say you be shaming me for me and I be? Why would people be embarrassed about Christ? Until I asked myself that. I mean, I was women, I was like, the last thing I wanted them to know was that I was, you know, a minister, I was a preacher. I didn't want them to know that. That should be the most rewarding thing about my life that I would want to confess. But it's the last thing because of the perception that people have of those who are in the church. This church is so embarrassing, nobody wants to identify and be a part of it. Right. We don't confess the truth that we are ashamed of the church. Jesus. Lord, because of the reputation the church having in the world. I was downstairs and I was moving the TV and it was on the, uh, the preachers up there, the answer. And I said, Lord, this is just, just so embarrassing for the church. Nobody, some of the don't put their mess up there. Um, the Muslim don't put their stuff there. Uh, Geo Woods don't put their stuff on TV. Um, nobody's putting this stuff out there, shaming and embarrassing, you know, exposing the inner workings of the church. If you expose the inner workings of the church, who's gonna come and be invited and wanna come to that? Mm -hmm. Right? If you, all that foolishness and chaos, confusion that they already in, in the world and they look and they see that. Church, What's gonna say? Let me go and get some of that. I mean, they ain't even displaying righteousness, and they said we just being real, but you being real ratchet. You being real, but you being really unholy. Like they're not being holy. They're not. They're not displaying no holy. And that's what people do. I'm just being real. As a reason, realness has to be with unrighteousness, and that's what people equate realness to being. Let me show you how filthy, how nasty, how. Crazy I can act, and that's me just being real. Let me let me cuss and let me show you how nasty I can be. I'm just being real. Wow. Like you can't really have joy and really have peace and really be holy and really have a standard. Right. 
because the church have adopted the same mindset of the world that realness is always equated with unrighteousness. Well, she does. And what's sad is started with the church. Jeez. He said, I therefore want you that I may glory through Jesus Christ and those things which pertain to God. Your only sense of power and favor is really the glory is only as it pertains to the things of God. But that's not where you think the source of your power and favor is from. Jesus. Some of y'all think it's your intellect, somebody think it's their look, somebody think it's their body, somebody think it's their power of persuasion, what they can say and how they can act, somebody think it's how they can write, somebody, you know, somebody think it's their occupation, somebody think it's you know their education, somebody, you know, we got all these reasons that we think that we have power and favor, and that's how we are rushed to obtain certain things because if I do this, it makes me more powerful. It makes me look more favorable. Mm -hmm. You know, I watch people rush to get married because they, that puts them in a position of power. Even when you watch the help, it's very powerful. When she said it's the, the head girl, she had a baby, so everybody else, all the other women had to start having babies. As a sense of power and authority, like, I'm going to rush and get married, and I'm going to have babies. And so now everybody else is going to do it. And she exercised that level of power and control over the other women. Like, if you ain't got a, if you don't, have, if you're not a housewife, have a, a baby, and a maid, you're nothing. So that's why when Skeeter came and said that she was just going and she just graduated from old Miss Avenue, he was like, Well, how many years is this? So it takes four years to get a degree. Like, but because she had not conformed, there was no power and favor in it. Wow. That's real. And that's what we do. But we let the world guide us and tell us what's powerful and favor. I've seen us look at people, oh, they are knowing it. I mean, I've seen people know people, hear them sing and cry and weep and know there's not a lick of anointing. Ain't nothing broken, not one yoke. That's and true. people don't want to end. They're like, oh my God, I can listen to that all day. Yeah, because it wouldn't be no different than listening to Beyonce. Right. Because there ain't no anointing there either. There, there's a difference between an influence and an anointing. That's good. Uh, influence can drop, but anointing has to break. Mm -hmm. And we think because people have the ability to draw, then that means that they have the ability to break. Because people start crying. Come on. They ain't crying because they feeling free. The they they been stirred up to feel something and think about something. Mm -hmm. go well. Listen. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not wrought by me. It don't even make sense to even talk about those things that ain't worked out in me yet. You want to talk about something that you know ain't worked out of you. <laughs> it ain't worked out of you. And it's hard to be honest about it. We don't say we're under construction. <laughs> we have a lot about what we did. God told us the way to do it. God told me the way. God said, not now, child. Not now. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> I'm not telling you that. So, uh, I didn't tell you that. And God I always can be to tell people no about telling them wait about things that they don't want to do. <laughs> or that they ain't start doing it. He told them three years ago. <laughs> All right. Mm. I just felt mm. I felt the lead just to put that on the shelf, right? <laughs> so you did felt, yeah, your emotion, your heart led you to do that. Because the Holy Spirit did not. One word God, he dropped out in my spirit and he, he told me this in Atlanta. He says, back to discipline. Amen. And that's why we're going through so much because we are restrained. We are fighting discipline. From your eating to your exercise to your mind to what you think to what you feel. God said, be disciplined. You can't feel everything right now. In your mind, you can't think about everything right now. And that's what we do. We do. I'm a power man. 
Mm-hmm. I can't think about what I want. I don't think about that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My mind wanted to wherever you want to go. Go mine. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go mine. Yeah. We still in the pilot stage. Wow. There's some things that God told you was giving me about. You know, I love. I was just pulling all kinds of stuff out. And I'm gonna continue. He said, "Begin to pull stuff out. Begin to pull out. I was like, Lord, every time you came downstairs, it's like a tornado. And like the more I pull out, the worse it get. And I said, God, what is this? He said, Your heart. He said, The more you pull out, there's more to deal with. Yeah. Every time I pull one back out, look like I was getting somebody out. I was like, God, I feel like I'm not getting nowhere. He said, That's why you're you're restless with your heart." Because one time you start pulling out one issue, then you thought there's another issue, and another issue. You feel like they ain't gonna never come to an end. Wow. <laughs> That's the word. So when you look at the work it requires for you to be better, that's why you quit and give up. Wow. You just pack it back in the bag and put it back where you found. <laughs> that's the truth, Lord. Let me just get it out of the way for right now. Don't let me deal with. Let me just move it from one place to another. Let me just. Reposition it Good. and not deal with it. Amen. You got to clean it up. <laughs> to make the Gentile obedient by word and deed. Listen, to make the Gentile obedient by word and deed. There are some things that you tell people to do to make them obedient, and there's some things they have to do to be obedient. Yeah. That's the part. Like, if I don't want to do it, then I, I, I don't know about saying that. If I don't want to do it, I just ain't going to do it because that's just who I am. But it says you got to be made to do it. Because God knows obedience don't work for you, it don't flow for you. Sure. And, and it ain't just telling them to be obedient. It's something they must do so they can learn how to be obedient. That's the part. That D part, oh, man, ain't nobody going to make you do that. Yeah. Somebody else wants to make you do that. So you learn obedience. And what did Christ say? See, I learned obedience to what? Love you. The things I suffered. How much longer are you going to have to suffer before you get in? My God, that's a word. How much longer? That's real. Because you think you're going to learn obey if somebody tell you or they teach you. But you're not. If Christ didn't learn it that way, we know you ain't. <laughs> it's when that heart that you go, God, I'm gonna obey. So you have to cry and cry and cry some more, and then you wow. say, Now I'm obey. Wow. You're not gonna learn, you, but you, but you, we so intelligent, we so smart, like, uh, uh-uh, it ain't gonna take that for me. I'm gonna learn a little bit because I, I don't have to go through that because I, I, but that's what the words say how you learn. And we'll twist the word to fit us and say, but that ain't how I'm going to learn. Wow. How are you not going to learn that way if God said it in his word and said Jesus who's the head of the church, that's how he learned. So how are you going to get around? Hello. Life. <laughs> Don't nobody want to say that. I just, I just feel like it's God. Because we believe that we're so, well, y'all don't really believe that, but you tell yourself that. That you believe that you are obedient. They don't really take much for you to obey. <laughs> that you really do. But do the right thing and do it presented you the right way. <laughs> See, we say we don't obey because people don't present it to us the right way. Like you ain't said to me right. You know, you use the wrong vocabulary. You had an attitude. It don't matter how people say, nobody got to dress stand up and you obey. You just got to do it. Ain't nobody got to say it to you the right way with a Bible carry. They got to have the right to like who you. That all these things ought to be said to you as your condition of obedience. No, it's, it's not true. And we got to be telling people that obedience don't require them to do something. If you don't obey the word, you don't bring the word, you don't obey and you don't come to prayer, there's a consequence. Like you have to, that's a deed. You got to do something that makes a, you have to sacrifice something that makes you think, okay, let me obey so I don't have to do that again. It, it's, a, it's, it, you know, it's Bible. You know, we keep trying to exert things that ain't God, 
No, you don't know where what's God evidently because this is why he put this in for you. <laughs> because if you knew how to obey, he would have to put the deed in there for you because he know you are the one that if, if you told you ain't going to do it and feel like you don't have to pay nothing for not doing it. And if you don't do it, it just should be what it is. But it ain't. Oh, what it is, there's a deed come with it. It's something you got to do to make up. Because what God doing, the result is God trying to better you. And this is the only thing he know to better you. To get you to do so you can have what you say you want so bad. Thank you, Lord. But the thing we still run from is accountability. See, this only hurt people who don't want to be accountable, who don't want to obey. Well, I ain't got to do all that, and I ain't doing all that. And you know, I man, I don't like you said, and they shouldn't have told. But then the same people want to give instruction to everybody, and want yeah, them to take it the first time. And they don't know why they can't do it, and why they can't follow what they've been told, and why they got to be so difficult, why they just in here and do it. And they don't know what's wrong with them and what's wrong. But it's you. Because you choose not to follow with your deed because you think your voice is enough. See, there are some people feel like their voice is enough. So they shouldn't have to give you anything to do because when they tell you, you should just take it to know why else would they tell you if it wasn't good for you. But it's the same one won't take the same advice from somebody else. That's good for them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we yeah. We're a killer man, let him what? Die. Yeah, it's for everybody, it's for all of us. Because even me, it's for me too, because we want people to quickly obey us. And then we don't quickly, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, well, I just want to have to bed and, and not to demonstrate or show you or walk you through or give any consequences. But then, because I don't want no consequences. Sometimes people don't, I don't give people that because they don't want to die, let them do it. No, you don't because you don't want to give them no consequences because you don't want none yourself. Jesus. It's a cop out. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, I don't mind giving people coffee. Because when I have to take my coffee, I have to grit and bear it. I don't like it, but I take it. But when people feel, and this is how you find out, you know, people can fake like, oh, I'm so submitted, I'm so in order, and I'm just, watch when you give them a consequence. Watch when you say, okay, this. And you find all that humility is gone. All them tears dried up. All that soft voice out the door. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You say, uh-uh, you got to do that. Well, 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 uh, they'll come straight out of a crowd with an attitude. <laughs> uh, reject <laughs> What? <laughs> yeah, it'll come just that quick. <laughs> but somebody got to teach you to be obedient. The word indeed. They got to make you be obedient. You want to make somebody who's unwilling. That's you can come out and die whatever you liar. You ain't really. <laughs> That's how you got to be forced to obey. You got to be forced to pray. You got to be called on. I tell you, you got to have a because you don't write a word like you say. Jesus. 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 It's a lie. Jesus. Hmm. You love the scripture. <laughs> yeah, as long as the book closed. <laughs> Jesus. You, you ain't thinking about it like that. And you don't want to think about it like that. As a matter of fact, you get mad when you have to think about it like that. Oh, Lord. I'm trying to hear because I'm hungry. Listen. <laughs> though many, though mighty signs and wonders, the oh God don't move for you. By the power of the Spirit of God, oh God don't move for you, and you still don't want to obey. <laughs> Jesus. Help me, Lord. Move, God. Move. Lord. He did. <laughs> and you still don't want to submit. Come on, help us. Lord, if you can't show me away, I'll follow. Hey, come this way. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you have some to do. Don't be rushing You did it. All that. And then he. What? No. <laughs> uh, hold on for a minute. Give me that. Uh, nobody gonna be running and telling me to do stuff just because they want to go now and now they want to rush. Oh God, you was ready. 
Lord, Lord. Until somebody else say, come on now. Lord, Lord. That's real. Ooh. That's real now. Yeah. God on this. Tell your neighbor, you all had too many signs. To be obedient, to be disobedient. God don't show you. What else he got to show you? What else he got to be? We all got one thing if God do it, you will change our mind. We're gonna say for now. God, if you do that, you have to tell I'll be up at 420. At the time five, I'll be oof, I'll be up, I'll climb up to the third. You, you would just be so on you, you ain't got nothing like God, you just be. Yeah, yeah, you got that. I mean, that happened to you like, oh God, but mm, it took you so long. I, it ain't really exciting anymore. Right. Oh, but if you can do this one, <laughs> Lord, help me stop, Lord, help me. What else do you want to be excited about? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. It says, so that from Jerusalem around about unto a I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. It don't matter. We're going to preach the gospel all the way around. It was a circle. It was an area. You don't preach up and down. We don't tell you up and down. God say, okay. We don't want to up and down the scriptures. Up and down. All around. <laughs> right. What God want me to do? Obey. Oh, right. He's been saying that since Genesis. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. Right, but you, you still ain't doing it. I mean, every sermon is laced with obedience. You have to lace it in there, and we just give it. No, I can't think. We have to, we have to slip it in there and mix it with something else before you get to the drink. You're not going to see. You're just not going to know it. And we don't preach and preach. Oh. And then somebody said, Oh my God, did you hear that? He's like, Oh, you just heard that? <laughs> no, no, no. But, mm, I don't know, but this kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. All down in him. <laughs> like, we, <laughs> it's like, really? Wow. <laughs> you don't even get offended anymore. You're like, Okay. As long as you get it, you know. <laughs> uh, you you get the, the same to get you delivered. You, know, you be like, okay, just get, just you got it. <laughs> you mean, you got it. You mean, I want to see the head of this face. Well, if you don't say it in a spoken tongue, and gave them interpretation, and they still didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> You hear you spoken to us and from God she get that man now. Oh God! <laughs> God don't spoke in another language. He interpreted it and gave you the <laughs> and you still ain't done it. <laughs> Lord help us, God. It's a yay, so I have strived to preach the gospel. We we doing everything trying to get this God this good news. And you say faith ain't good news. It still ain't good news to you. Jesus. Mm. It still ain't good news. You, you hear this? It's like, no. Mm. Here goes another thing I'm about to do. <laughs> <sighs> okay, here goes something else where I ain't doing right, Lord. Lord, just help me. I ain't, got, I ain't doing nothing right, Jesus. Oh, oh, the spirit of a victim. Yes, I speak to that hellion in you <laughs> and tell you, humble it, baby. Humble it. Bring it on down. Not down the hill. Hopefully, that you can sit down in it. Come on up. We got to stop that. Recognize what needs to be changed and just move progressive down this whole yeah. You're quick looking at all of God. Well, I'm not right now. I thought I was doing it right. Like, okay, you found out. Mm -hmm. No, people really get frustrated. I ain't doing it right. God, I told God, I tried. You know, like, just pouting and carrying on. Like, 
okay, it ain't why you screaming and acting crazy because you still ain't like, just obeying. <laughs> They ain't got nothing to do with God, that's you. Not with Christ who blame you. I should build up another man's foundation. Like, and this is the thing, we so scared. This is why you want to encourage somebody. You think you're going to build them up before you. Oh, Lord. I ain't going to make them think they more in God than me. Sheesh. I ain't going to pray them through it. Mm -mm. We pray for people and won't use just thank you, Lord. Yeah. I mean, you pray for people, and when you see God moving for them, then you turn around and be jealous of they move. That's real. <laughs> That's real. Mm. That's a good they word. ain't told me thank you. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why do they have to thank you for you obeying God? <laughs> That's true. Man, said that be what God did, honey. If I would have prayed, honey, they'd still be on that bicycle. Mm -hmm. But you. <laughs> Like people really want you to give them credit for their faith. Like they ain't said thank you in that. We thought you were just a vehicle. We don't get we thank the cab driver, but we don't we don't thank the car. Help me, Lord. Oh Lord. You don't say, oh car, thank you. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. No, you you tip this if you're gonna tip the cab driver, <laughs> but you don't sit there and tip the car. You were just a vehicle of the world. Why do we have to even acknowledge you at all? Nugget. I got the guy. He's like, I've been there. Like, mm, they ain't saying that God didn't. They ain't saying that. God said they don't have to. Why they got to acknowledge you? Because that's you still wanting some of the what? Glory. 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 God said, I'm denied before I see you think it's yours. Jeez. Some people God won't even let tell you nothing because he won't let you think you're going to take what is the right to belong to him. So you don't have to keep it because that's his stuff. You don't mess with God's stuff. You don't mess with God's money. You don't mess with God's glory. And you don't mess with his revenge. That's his stuff. You don't mess with his people. He said, that's mine. When he says mine, you leave that stuff alone. Amen. Don't mess with God. Brother. God, that's yours. But as it is written, to whom he was not spoken of, they shall see. And some people never heard him, but as soon as you say it, they see. Why they see? You sit up in church all your life and still don't. I just refuse to let I don't know. I'm like, Lord, mm -mm. ain't nobody just going to come in and believe it. I'm sitting there doubting, scuffling. Mm -hmm. I was laughing up there. I said, now, what's kind of came in was a teenager came and got married for everybody. Uh, <laughs> wait, what? Uh, what happened? Uh, Daniel. 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 Oh. Daniel came in and married for everybody. I said, Lord, now that's shame. <laughs> Daniel don't have a scripture. He <laughs> Daniel reached out and y'all do two or three books. <laughs> 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 I said, Lord, I murdered Daniel on Shane the same day. <laughs> I said, Lord, Daniel said, listen. <laughs> Lord, help us out. See, I'm like, Lord, what happened? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> and they that have not heard shall understand. There are people I did not say. You know, some people they were like, listen, I don't even even know all that. But bless me about um Alan. I'll be telling something he said, Apostle, I don't even have to know that. That's what God said, that's enough. And I'm like, Lord, I'm trying to explain, but he said, I, Pastor, I don't even know all that. Just give me what God, that's enough. Amen. And I was like, Lord, I don't even know how to take that. Can you tell the saints you got to tell them 10 times? You gotta explain it. And they gonna come back and try to get you another scripture while where, where your scripture ain't enough oh, and all of that. And I just like he just said, mm -mm, I don't need all of that. He said, I don't need all that because what I know, what you spoke about me, nobody knew but God. So if God gave you that, why am I question this? I said, Can you teach that to the saints? <laughs> But 
what God told me is that he just like the centurion, he understand being an authority. They recognize other authority. The problem is you deal with people who ain't never had no authority, so they don't recognize real authority. Jesus. See, he don't have authority, so he understands that. That when you say something, you know the power. You don't have time at that level to sit down and explain and go through. You understand that this is what you do and you just do it. That's how Jesus just come in. Ain't no angel say, well, listen, I don't understand why you sending Gabriel and not me. He's not, he's not explaining that to Michael. I can't get no help in here. Amen. Let me do something. The elders, all the ministers, the ministers want to be a minister. Everybody want an explanation. All right. You know what? And I just need to understand for I can do it. You're a liar. You know why? Because guess what? The Bible says even the angels don't know when God should come. So there's some stuff you don't even tell them and even reveal to them. And he don't feel a necessary a need to even share it with them. And they're working and labor and they've been doing it before you ever got him when they was hovering over the water. And so I just as long as I've been here, I feel like I should know. No, you don't have to know them. That's the thing that he don't never have to expel or, or reveal to you. Because your inability to grab hold and believe will be that I used to tell us you can't have everybody money. Because people over the money don't believe, honey, y'all will never make it. Jesus. It takes somebody, let me tell you something, that's a very peculiar phrase. It takes somebody who believes and ain't shit. Because baby, I'll be doing something, I'll be like, honey, they be like, we ain't got nothing, honey, I don't need that. Don't tell me we ain't got, don't tell me what God won't do. And we don't need nobody who questions and can't believe and can't stretch out there, don't, don't touch it. Because if you do, you'll start struggling with it. Wow. Because people don't believe. When they don't believe, they don't need to be touching them when they unfaithful and don't believe hands. No. <laughs> right. No, they don't need that's a that's a very peculiar place. Because mm -hmm. baby, you'll struggle with people don't believe. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay. I don't care if they're good at math no math. <laughs> <laughs> they good at math. No one. Let him go add up children's books. Well. <laughs> you can't. You'll learn. You can't because if they inability to believe, it will affect the whole body. Wow. I mean, you can't be, and I keep trying to tell those who ride and play the leisure, you can't be there and people see. I'm just being real. You're being real off. And people see that, and then when you get real on, no, nobody trusts that. Because it's the human nature to believe when you were off, and nobody wants to remember when you were on. That's true. You got to watch stuff like that. Even if I was stuck, you know, I don't, don't make it. I'm just going to give up on God. You ain't never heard me say that. I'm a child. I don't know how God going to do it, but I know he is somehow. Somehow. I'm a child. That's all I know. You don't even try to. God ain't doing nothing for me. I feel like quit going in the car. I ain't going. You never heard me say that. Never. Because I know my strength, baby. I was scream and holler at the top of my lungs and look to the hill, come out here. Before I sit down here and be confessing something that I have to walk out later on talking crazy. Mm -mm, no, I'm not doing that. And then if I doubt that God can do it, then how much come and preach the word of faith to you? If every other week you see me feel like that. It's so hard to get along. My Lord, I, you can't hardly get along and make it. Then what, how that going to inspire me? You got to live a life that it inspires and provokes people to say, I can do it. I can move it. Come on, let's do this. God got this. It should inspire you and provoke somebody to go and do what they couldn't do before. And if not, then you, you, you're not doing your job. That was for but thinking you always got to know you ain't got to know whatever you know that's what God wants you to do that's what he wants you to know when I'm learning stuff that God don't want you to know guess what he ain't telling you you know what I'm you got enough on your plate you'll be able to use that as an excuse for why you won't believe God for something else sometimes God doing you a favor because you struggle with what you got add one more thing to your plate mm -hmm. What's wrong? Child, so much on my back. All right, <laughs> lift my head up. <laughs> you can't, you can't hardly move. You got so much on you now. Amen. 
<laughs> yeah, now nah, this I understand. Listen, it shouldn't take much. What you need to understand that God moves according to how He desires in His will. You don't move according to what you feel or what you think. God is not moved based upon the realm of your emotion. I keep saying, God, God is not gonna get emotional because you have. Well, that's good. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Nah, that's not gonna provoke him because hmm. he's spiritual. I keep saying, Lord, teach me how to be spiritual without being numb. Lord, I want to be spiritual, but I don't want to feel like I don't have any emotions. Because I like, I, like I, I feel everything or I don't feel nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm extremely black. God, I, we'd rather feel nothing. That's real. Because you see people always falling apart. You're like, Lord, I don't want that. Mm-hmm. I just can't take them highs and lows and emotions. I, God, I just. You just going through, but there's a balance in there. God do want you to feel because He said that you know, he's, he's touched with the feeling of our infirmities. He knows what it is to feel like what you're going through. He's touched by that. He can feel it, but not be affected. So you got to teach God to teach you how to feel, but not be affected. Because everything you feel, it affects you. If we can tell, like what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> he, uh, he's going to the store, baby. He you know, went to the store. He went to the store. He went to the store. But you don't broke down and cry over there. <laughs> Me, you got issues. You, you, it can't be. You got to. Uh, you got. You got to be where you can put it up. You know, Larry was to the store, and I'm gonna believe that he's coming back. You know, hey man, it's gonna take a ten years to get back and put that milk. You went out for you know what I'm saying? You just gotta, you gotta know how to build it in. You gotta know how to. Now I'm asking God, give me back. That's why I've been praying. I keep praying, God, give me balance. 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 God, please give me balance. Yeah. Now you know, as I interact with the people, you know, it's, it's, it's this saying now it's like it's in the universe. You know, y'all hear people been saying it lately yeah. a lot. No. People, they've been saying it a lot, you know, and I was talking to Carla from the and she's like, Clean, I just know it's in the universe. I said, What? <laughs> I don't want the universe, I need me in the earth. Because God ain't praying about what's in the universe. He's praying on the earth. Because I ain't in the universe, I'm in the earth. I need this specific detail. I know the earth is part of the universe, but I, I don't need that way. I, I don't need no part there. I need something right here, local. <laughs> Amen. Like, I was like, Yeah, here. You know, but people like you know, the universe is releasing stuff, and I, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, Wow, I was just like, Wow, and you guys do out of. I said, the universe wants you to send me them cookies, though. <laughs> That's what I know, send them cookies. The universe. <laughs> yeah, but, um, <laughs> but I'm just telling you, we really get this going to be new. People going to be talking a lot about the universe. And, but it's still a part of the stars. It's still a part of high school. Y'all don't even understand. Yeah. This thing still is mixing. And people, you think people don't stray from hard school, you watch. You watch before the end of the year. People gonna be into it like never before. Because people they are anxious. I'm telling you, you ain't seen all these psychic places. They they pitch it up. You know, and it's so sad. I'm so upset about the church, about Brian Kearns. And you know, for those who don't know, you know, he's a very well-known prophet. He's like the upcoming young TV Jays or whatever. But he's a prophetic one. He was loud, just prophesied over the church preaching going off. And what happened was uh, J- uh, we saw Jack McCullough preach at his church, and what happened is that you know then people begin to expect a word from you, mm-hmm. and they expect you to tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them. And I guess you know they, they expect too much from him. He just couldn't produce. Mm-hmm. You know, I believe he said some things very accurately. So what he did was the psychic. She um, said some things were going to happen, and he memorized it. 
and he, he got in and he said everything that she said. But he even messed up when she messed up. That's what you can't understand. <laughs> like he learned it just like that, like she said, and that's how he gave it. And even when she erred, he erred in the same place. And so the church, I went crazy. And somebody, see, see people in the church, they always watch the church. They called them out. They went and they got the thing side by side. She said it first, and it was the exact same word as she And he released to the church of people crying and falling out of them. Oh, that man of God, I didn't know it came right from a psychic's mouth. Mm -hmm. But what I tell people is that you still have to remember that psych is one seeing from the realm of darkness, one seeing from the realm of light. And they can see the same thing. But they can't say the same thing. And God is not going to say the same thing the way the world would. And so, you know, they are really moved. And it's just been, you know, y'all, we have to pray for the body because the body is in trouble from, you know, all the stuff coming out, you know, these different people, you know, the enemies after the church to discredit the church. The church is broken with divorce. The church is broken with domestic violence. The church is broken with psychic. All the enemy is doing is trying to tell us that the church is not relevant. It's not true. It's not honest. I mean, it's just really big and saying, like, if you that, you crazy to be a part of that. And Y'all keep y'all, I keep saying there's gonna be a great falling away. It's happening, people don't know it. Just so people are going to church, there's gonna be a falling away. And y'all don't even realize that right now Mula is the fastest growing religion in our country. It's growing faster than Christianity, Buddhism, anything else. Because people are looking for truth and they look for something that's solid. They look for something that don't go and attack its own and expose them. You know, there's adultery and everything, you know, but you, I bet you won't hear about it. I bet it won't be on the news. It won't make the news. Mm -hmm. I bet ain't nobody running from the mafia to go and tell them either. Mm -hmm. Only the church do that. Let's expose the body. You know, let's, let's shame the body. Let's hurt the body and let's destroy it. We got to pray. Mm -hmm. From James Fortune, we got to pray. From Israel, we got to pray. So Brian Kearns, y'all, we got to pray. The body's in trouble. And this is people's perception of the, of the body of Christ as a whole. And they categorize and associate with us everything that's negative. And we can't even see it. So I want to encourage you tonight to pray. Pray for this nation. Pray for the church. Pray for the leaders and leadership. Pray for me. Pray for, pray for you. If you are a leadership, pray for yourself to God. Help me to be an effective leader. Help me to be an effective minister. Help me to be an effective leader. I want to be effective. Help me be a better leader. That should be your prayer. Do you really pray God let you be a better leader? That you can really exemplify that that God has called for for the church. We got to wake up Zion out of our sleep. We got to be about the Father's business. Amen? Amen. All right. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we just thank you, God, for the word tonight. Father, we pray that that word bring light to us, oh God, where we were dying in our faith and dying, oh God, in our belief systems, oh God, as it surrounds you in your word. God, I pray tonight that give us a love for the truth. Mm -hmm. And as we confess that truth, that truth strengthens us, oh God, to confess more truth. And as that we confess more truth, oh God, until we start living and walking, till it raises us up and causes us to walk it out. God, I ask, oh God, on tonight, that God, that you really be our shepherd, and we shall not want all the things that we would lust and go after. We'd rather have you. God, I ask even now in Jesus' name, oh God, strengthen us to be and do that, what you said, Father God, so we can be all that you called us to be in you. We know it's not by power, nor is it by might, but it's simply by your spirit that you're gonna do these things. So Father, we ask, oh God, let thy will be done. Amen. Oh God, on earth as it is in heaven. God, we thank you for it now. Not our will, but let thy will be done. God, we thank you in advance about how you're gonna move and we know it's gonna be you. Father, we ask even now that you strengthen us, oh God. Where will we build us up where we're torn down, Father God? Repair, oh God, the places that are broken, oh God. I pray, oh God, even tonight, Father God, open up our minds and our hearts and our spirit to receive and grab the word of God, which is able to save our soul. Father, our cries for truth. God, our cries, oh God, to be better. God, we know if we would just believe.
God, you will fill us with all joy and all peace. We believe it to be so. We're not going to stop, oh God, until we're there. We thank you with grace, oh God. With sin abound, grace abound more. God, you won't leave us in sin, oh God, because our heart is to do right. God, we have a do right mind, oh God, as we achieve it, as we strive to take on the mind of Christ so we can achieve that, that we desire. God, help us, oh God, till we obtain it. God, we thank you in advance for what you're going to do. We pray for the body of Christ tonight. Lord, we don't turn on the body, God. We don't expose it to the world. We pray for the body. Mm -hmm. For those who are, God, are mishandling, misusing, those who are operating and where they have not been called, God. For those who've been called, but God, they don't have the character, Father. We pray for those, oh God, Lord, who are trying to do it, they follow short of your glory, confused, oh God, hurt, disappointed, whatever's misled or led them astray. We call them back on track. Father, heal the body, oh God, cover the body. Why are you here? God, we be so careful to tell the world it was you and you alone. And for that, we give you the honor, the glory, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God be blessed. Talk to you all Sunday.